Hello, all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. And let's talk about things that people don't normally do in Game Maker. So in the last video, or I should say the first video on Toon Shaders that I made, at the end I said I was probably going to do 3D outlines next. And then I decided that what we're going to be doing instead is probably going to be more useful to more people, so I'll do that first instead. I'll get to the outline some other day. We're going to be talking a little bit more about lighting. So this is a pretty basic tune shader that was written. Uh, you see it has three stages of lighting. There's fully illuminated, fully dark, and something in the middle. This is a pretty basic tune shader effect. Uh, this was written in the last video. If you have not watched that video, I recommend doing that for obvious reasons before you continue with this one. I will have links to that in the, in the corner of the video and in the description down below and all that stuff. This is achieved by, uh, by writing a shader that takes a, a normal lighting shader. This is just a spotlight shader and it converts the n.l value, which is used for determining how much of a, of a fragment is illuminated, and converting it into some other value uh, using what is known as a ramp texture. The ramp texture is this. Uh, it is a 256 by 1 image, which contains three colors. Uh, there is black on the left, there is grayish in the middle, and there is white on the right. And it, it, uh, it turns that color into a brightness value just by averaging the three color channels. There are other ways to obtain a brightness value from a color, but uh, this is simplest, so I just went with this. And then it just substitutes that value, that brightness value, into the, uh, the rest of the lighting equation, or the color of the light and the attenuation value and the n.l value are uh, combined and turned into a final uh, lighting value. There's a few more things you can do with this that I have not talked about. We're going to start with uh, the ramp texture, the color of the ramp texture. This isn't wholly interesting, this is just a grayscale image. The color doesn't really have anything to do with this. However, there's no reason it can't. If you have a mind for vectors, if you go back over to the fragment shader over here, uh, you probably have realized that the color that you obtain from the ramp texture when you do the texture 2D lookup is a vector 4. And you are allowed to multiply vector 4s by other vector 4s in addition to just vector 4s by floats. This expression here is a, is a vector 4 multiplied by a floating point number, which is going to produce another vector 4. While if we were to instead substitute the, uh, the n.l underscore adjusted for the original color that you obtained from the ramp texture, and comment out that line because it's not really needed anymore, uh, this will still work. This will still produce a vector 4 because vector 4 times float times vector 4 is a vector 4. And if I were to run the game now, the exact same thing would happen. Uh, the only difference being that in the code we are multiplying by a, uh, a color, red, green, and blue, instead of just a single floating point number. Uh, the reason it looks the same is because grayscale images, I meant to click this tab, uh, grayscale images have the same color values on the red, green, and blue color channels, so black, as you probably know, is 0, 0, 0, white is 1, 1, 1, and gray is somewhere in the middle. We're basically multiplying the, uh, the lighting color by 0 or 0.5 or 1.0 uh, three times instead of just one. This lets us use the ramp texture in some interesting ways. Normally, if you wanted to change the color of the light, uh, you would, instead of messing around with another texture, you would go to the part of the code where the light color is passed to the shader as a uniform. If I were to make this a blue light or something, I would, I would pass a color of 0, 0, 1 and 1 on the alpha channel to the shader as the light color. And now when I run the game, uh, you will see that Link is a, is a kind of ghostly blue, underwater blue or something like that. Midnight blue, whatever you prefer. That's fine, we've seen that before. I'm going to turn that back to white and uh, everything's going to be back to normal. But, now that we're actually using the color on the ramp texture in the tune shader, uh, we have the ability to use the tune shader to affect the color of the light instead. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to select that, how about that blue color? and apply it to this uh, to this layer. And then I'm going to use the, the multiply blend mode in the layer properties to turn this um, so that you can see the layers below. Hey. So that you can see the darkness of the layers below. And I'm gonna talk about blend modes some other day. They're really fascinating. They're more interesting than I think a lot of people give them credit for, but that's a story for another day. Anyway, the ram texture now looks blue. There is a uh, black, bluish, dark blue, and light blue. And now when you run the game, Uh, we can see that Link has again been colorized, and this is now colorized based on the ramp texture instead of any color that was passed into the light, um, to the shader via the, uh, the lighting uniform. This is pretty interesting. At least I think. Some people may think this is kind of boring. 
Uh, this this has the advantage over hard coding your lighting values into the um, into your code. Of if you're working with an artist, you can just ask them for a color palette that they want to use on the um, on the light in the tune shader, and they can just give you this color image, and you can just stick it in the game, and they wouldn't have to bother noodling around with code, or um, at least you wouldn't have to. So it does have the ability to possibly um, simplify the work you have to do a little bit. You can also use this trick. You can also use a ramp texture, a colorized ramp texture for um, even if you're not running a tune shader. If you just had a smooth gradient from black to white and it was colorized somehow and you turned on um, texture filtering, you would essentially have smooth shading all over again, but you would be able to control the light color or the um, you would be able to control the color of the scene with a texture instead of with, um, with color values and code somewhere. So the other thing you can do is you may notice that when we are sampling from this um, from this ramp texture, we are using a, a vertical texture coordinate of zero. And right now that doesn't really matter because this happens to be a one dimensional image. But as most of you are probably aware, textures can be two dimensional. Oh, uh, they're a two dimensional grid of pixels. And if you wanted to, you could use um, the vertical part of the image to accomplish other things. In the Wind Waker tune shader video that I like to talk about often, uh, Mr. Ashworth basically describes how the Legend of Zelda Wind Waker uses different color palettes at different times of day, different color tones. They're not really palettes. So you have a brighter set of colors to use during the day versus a darker set of colors to use at night. And then when different weather conditions happen, you might have a, other sets of colors that you use during the day and night. That's certainly one use for this. Uh, there are others that you could sh surely come up with. So uh, I am going to go to uh, resize this image and I am going to size it up to 256 by 256. This isn't automatically going to change anything. Uh, again, we are um, we are looking at the vertical texture coordinate of zero. So uh, even though the image itself is now bigger, we are still simply looking at basically the top row of pixels on our ramp texture. But what if we did want to have, for example, something like a day night cycle? So I'm going to make a few changes here. One, I'm going to, um, for now, simply remove about the bottom half of this. Did not mean that. Did I mean that? No. Why Why is that deleting the layer? All right, the Game Maker Sprite Editor sucks, God. Like, I know what they're trying to do with the Sprite Editor, but I don't think it's working, like, at all. What on earth? Okay, you know what? Screw this. We're doing this in Photoshop. Okay, so here we go. This is more or less the, the ramp texture that we have in the Game Maker Sprite Editor. I had to recreate it in Photoshop because... Honestly, how do you even copy and paste something out of the Game Maker Sprite Editor without saving it to a file? And who wants to do that? Okay, and let's uh, let's just delete half of this. So now we have half in um we have the top half which is bluish and the bottom half which is whitish. I am going to uh, flatten this image and copy the whole thing. And uh, we're just going to paste it in here. Fortunately, you can you can kind of paste stuff out from outside into the Game Maker Sprite Editor without too much trouble. Okay, I can also set the blend mode back to normal there because I don't really need the, uh, the multiplication effect anymore. Anyway, this video would be so much easier to make if, um, if the Game Maker Sprite Editor just wasn't what it was. All right, I just ran the game. Nothing, nothing has really changed since, um, since we haven't done anything different to the code. Time, day, night cycles. Let's create a uniform, and I'm just going to call this a uniform float. Uh, let's just call it time. I've talked about time many times in the past. This is a fairly common uniform to pass to a shader if you want it to change the way it looks over time. And we are going to feed that into the, uh, the vertical coordinate of the vector two that goes into the ramp texture. So time, as you can probably imagine here, is going to be a number between zero and one. I am going to go over to the uh, to this camera. I'm going to go down to the bottom of the create event and I'm going to just initialize that to zero. And let's see, I really should do this in the step event, but uh, in the draw event right before this is done, we're going to increment time by one. So time is essentially going to be the number of frames since the game has started. There are other ways you could obtain time. Um, you could, there are other ways you could obtain the duration that the game has been running. There are a couple built-in timing variables for that, but I'm just gonna go with this one. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, grab that uniform from the shader. I'm going to call it uniform underscore time. And then we can, uh, we can set that uniform. 
and uh, we're going to assign it the value of time. However, since this is an integer that continuously counts up 60 times per second, after one second it'll be have a value of 60, after two seconds it'll have a value of 120. And since we want this to have a value between 0 and 1, uh, let's go and divide that by something, let's say 400. And this will slow it down, it'll take 400 frames for it to go from 0 to 1. Uh, I, will, I will do more with that in a moment, but we just want to see if it's doing anything yet. And indeed, we can see that periodically Link is changing from the, uh, the darkened color to the lightened color. Okay, so now we can see it's working. Uh, we can also see that this is kind of ping-ponging back and forth between dark and light. Uh, this has to do with your texture repetition settings. That is something else I have made a video on in the past. Essentially, if the time uniform has a value greater than 1, it will be, uh, it will be wrapped around to the beginning by the default texture repetition setting, or at least the texture repetition setting that I have on now. This is done in the uh, in the texture 2D lookup, I should say, in the texture sampler, and it's not something that will automatically happen to the time uniform. If you were to change the texture repetition settings with something like GPU set text repeat, set that to true. I don't know if there's a difference between text repeat with and without the underscore, but I usually go with the underscore. Uh, and I wanted to set that to false, not to true. Uh, this will this will cause the the um the lighting ramp texture to stop ping-ponging back and forth. Once he illuminates, he will just stay illuminated. And he won't wrap back around because the um, the texture coordinates will be clamped instead of repeating. Okay, he's not changing colors again. If you want to get around that, we can always use uh, we could always use a couple of math tricks. You could either take the modulo of um, of this calculation and one, and this will uh, this will return the remainder of this value when it's divided by one. So if you have something like 1.5, take the modulo of that and one, uh, you'll have 0.5 as the remainder, and that will be the result that goes into the uh, the uniform function. GML also has a function called frac, which will do the same thing. It will return the fractional part of a number, which is uh, which is also what we what we want at the end of the day. So we can use that, and this will cause the um, this will cause the light to ping pong back and forth between light and dark. Okay, so now that we've uh, now that we've established that, we can create somewhat of a more sophisticated gradient. Again, using Photoshop because the Game Maker Sprite Editor has issues. Did not actually want to delete that. Um, if I were to use the gradient tool in Photoshop and do something like maybe this, that's actually the opposite of what I wanted. Let's try that again. Uh, let's do this so that we have a dark color on the top and the bottom and a light color in the middle. You can think of this as, as if this is a day-night cycle. Um, the top of this image would be, say, 12 midnight. The middle of the image would be 12 in the afternoon. And then the bottom will be uh, 12 midnight again, so there's a cycle. Let me go and uh, flatten that image, copy, paste it back into Game Maker, hopefully without too much aggravation, and run the game again. And you will now see that something uh, a little bit more smooth is happening. So there is a smoother transition between light, as in the middle of the day, and dark um, at night or something like that. Again, you could use this for other things. You could, you could have this like clear weather and thunderstorm weather. It doesn't have to be a day-night cycle. Hey. And we are now smoothly transitioning between the different colors, between the different times of day colors. This gives you a lot of power. If you want to change the colors that are in use, you don't have to do anything to the code. You just have to um, change the ramp texture. If I wanted to do something completely wild, like let's, uh, I think Photoshop Elements 6, which I'm using now, has like a built-in rainbow gradient, something like this. So if I wanted to, if I wanted to have a little bit of fun, We could uh, we could uh, we could totally have Link use this as his uh, as his ramp texture. Let's do this. All right, and um, that did not copy and paste. Perfect. Thank you, thank you, Photoshop and Game Maker. I don't know who I should blame. Um, my my suspicion is that I should blame Game Maker about this 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 failing to apparently copy and paste because um, it's usually the one to blame when problems happen with the image editor. There we go. There we go. So this is going to make Link look like he's at some sort of weird disco party. You can see he's cycling through all the different colors of the rainbow. And that looks, uh, well, it looks like something all right. I have no idea what you might actually use this for. I'm sure some of you have some ideas. 
Anyway, this is uh, this is changing colors based on the ramp textures. I don't actually know if this is precisely how Wind Waker uses its colors at different times of day versus at, at different weathers versus um, other conditions. I suspect it does something that's at least similar to this, however, since this isn't actually really any more complicated than what we had before. It just uses all of the... Um, it really just uses all of the tools at your disposal when you're using textures. Anyway, that's it. This is hopefully a shorter video. Go off and have fun and make your Legend of Zelda Wind Waker games where you have Link throwing like a disco party or whatever. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I try to post a couple of these game dev videos a week, sometimes about the weirder things you can do with Game Maker, sometimes about simple things. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, there are links to that all over the place. If you want the code for this, there will be a, uh, a GitHub repository in the video description. I hope you all enjoyed this. Definitely let me know if you plan on doing something fun with this effect. And I will see you all later. And you know what? Just just for fun, because of the religious holiday that's that's kind of happening at this time of year. Link is now one of Santa's elves. I am not sorry. Yes, I am. I apologize to anyone watching this who may have deuteranopia. Special thanks to David Key, Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Indie Punch, Jason, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or to hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page in the video description to join the fun.